Good morning. Thanks for being with us here on Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham. We are tracking breaking news here at the 7 o'clock hour. One person is injured after an early morning fire in North Spokane. Krem 2's Malia Kamal is at that scene right now. Malia, good morning. What are you seeing? Good morning, Tim. Currently right now there is one fire truck that is on the scene, but just an hour or so ago there were nine trucks battling the flames of this house fire. Now the flames were so bad that it busted out the windows of the house next door. According to the Spokane Fire Department, the call came in around 3 a.m. There were four people in the house. Two people were trapped in the basement, but thankfully a neighbor down the street noticed a fire and helped save the two people from the basement. Now one of these people that was were saved were taken to the hospital to be treated for minor injuries. Now I spoke to the neighbor across the street and she helps describe the scene awful. I just I immediately thought I, I hoped that everyone was OK. The heat coming off of the house was intense. Now, SFD says the house looks like a total loss. And uh, as of now, they do not know what caused the fire. But of course, we will give you all the details as we learn them. Live in Spokane, Malia Kamal, Creme 2 News. Weather-wise, fairly chilly morning out there because even though it is fairly cloudy, our temperatures have been close to the freezing mark this morning, including currently at 34 degrees, but a bit of a breeze just developed around the Spokane area. A 15 mile per hour wind just putting the wind chill at 24 degrees, so it feels quite cold as you step outside or if you are yet to step outside this morning. Some of our morning low temperatures have been as cold as 28 degrees across the Inland Northwest, which has prompted frost advisories until 8 o'clock this morning, but we should slowly start to warm things up from here. Even Coeur d'Alene is up by a couple degrees since the early morning hours, now up to 38 degrees. A few locations around Grand Coulee and OMAC are in the low 40s as of this morning, which is a little bit better. And it's actually great that those locations are in the 40s because there has been some light precipitation that has drifted through the area, including Grand Coulee, likely just stain as rain and thankfully not snow in the lower elevations just because those temperatures were a couple degrees warmer overall. As we look at the bus stop forecast this morning, just make sure the kids are bundled up as they are waiting for the stop because it is well into the 30s for most areas this morning, but should be mid 50s by the afternoon. Well, it was a wild weather weekend here in our region. One of our Creme 2 photographers captured this video when he was outside doing his yard work at his home and obviously very surprised to see this in May. Wow, take a look. Well, that of course wasn't the only unsettled weather this weekend. The National Weather Service confirmed two tornadoes touched down in the Spokane area on Friday night. So they're the first in about six years. The first happened in Airway Heights, while the other could be seen at a Vista Stadium. Wow, incredible video there. While the tornadoes also caused quite a bit of damage in Spokane Valley, even flipping a trailer onto another trailer. When Spokane Valley fire crews arrived, they found two people trapped inside one of the mobile homes. One of them, one gentleman said that evening he just finished talking to his wife and uh, said he was gonna lay down and take a nap. And the next thing he knew, he was upside down. The fire department says those two people were not hurt. Happening today, Spokane City Council members plan to bring forward a resolution that could allow the city to rehire firefighters let go due to the state COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Council members Michael Cathcart and Jonathan Bingle will be bringing a resolution forward aimed at reducing overtime costs within the Spokane Fire Department. The resolution is being brought forward is all a part of a plan due to lack of staffing within the fire department. In October of last year, the department reported they could lose 38 firefighters due to the Washington state COVID vaccine mandate. The state vaccine mandate applied to anyone who performed health care duties at their job, which included firefighters. With fewer firefighters on staff, the current firefighters have to work overtime to address emergencies throughout the city. The resolution wants to reduce these overtime costs by implementing any cost saving measures. One of these measures would be rehiring firefighters that were let go due to not complying with the vaccine mandate. We're sitting right now at a really critical uh, vacancy rate in our organization. All throughout that time, we've had people leaving due to retirement. Um, also from the governor's mandate, we've lost a number of people. It's been exceptionally hard for us on a day-to-day -day basis.
Spokane Fire Chief Brian Schaefer says a number of unvaccinated firefighters were hired back into accommodated positions such as the fire marshal's office and the dispatch center. In November of last year, Mayor Nadine Woodward ordered an audit of the fire department's overtime costs. The results of that audit are expected to be released sometime this month. New information on Saturday's shooting involving a police officer in Wenatchee. The officers involved are now on administrative leave. Detectives are investigating the shooting. One man died and an officer was injured. Wenatchee police officers responded to reports of someone shooting in front of the Living Hope Community Church on Saturday morning, hours before the start of the Apple Blossom Festival. The name of the man killed and the officers have not been released. Well, avian flu has now reached eastern Washington. The Washington State Department of Agriculture confirmed a case in Spokane County. Officials say this case was detected in a backyard flock made up of geese, chickens, ducks, and guinea fowl. One goose died after showing unusual behavior like walking abnormally, shaking its head, not moving, and a lack of fear of humans. The rest of the flock was euthanized and to prevent the spread of the disease. Now, this is the second confirmed case of avian flu in Washington. The other was found in Pacific County in southwest Washington. The state health department says the risk of spreading to humans is extremely low and is mainly transmitted from wild to domestic birds. It's time for your morning rush. More news in less time. Starting today, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife will be temporarily closing public access area at the Liberty Lake area. Now, it will be closed through May 17th. The time will be used to finish an improvement project, which includes repainting the lower parking lot and the installation of a boarding float. The area will be back open as soon as the work is completed. Four more Fairchild Airmen are now accused in a growing investigation into stolen ammunition at the Air Force Base. A total of six personnel have been indicted. They have all been accused of conspiring to steal military ammunition from Fairchild and falsifying documents to make it look like the stolen ammunition was used for official military use. Documents say approximately 14,000 rounds of assorted ammunition was stolen. Working moms know it can be tough to juggle a job and motherhood. Now, a new U.S. Army directive aims to ease parts of that burden and help parents succeed as soldiers. The Army says now a parent can defer for a year from deployments, operations, and trainings longer than one day duty to care for a newborn. Plus, there are protections to help expecting and new moms continue their training. And that's a look at your morning rush. It's Boomtown Week at Krem 2. We're going over the region's growth. Coming up, I'll be talking specifically about neighbors and newcomers to the Rathdrum area. Since the start of the pandemic, we've heard people talk about antibodies and how they could protect us from infection. But just how many do we have? So we verify. Time for your uh, wake up call. We are kicking off our Boomtown series this week and we're talking about area growth and people moving to our region. So we want to know What's something that you won't get rid of no matter how many times you move? Here's some of what you've already told us. Someone said, me, my dog, my musical tools. Another person wrote, their photos, letters, and yearbooks, and a beat up telephone table that my mom got at a yard sale. Well, that sounds vintage. And then someone said a quilt that their daughter made for them. So keep sending in what you just can't get rid of. We all have them. Text us 509-448-2000. But first, here's a live look outside. We say good morning to Post Falls and all of the Inland Northwest. Happy Monday to you. Let us know where you're watching from. And hey, thanks for starting your morning with us here on Up With Crow.